Hey guys, welcome back. And it's time for another video tutorial. And this time we're going to work on the shirt. Now, if you saw the last video I posted, you know that video will be in the link below. Uh, we went ahead and we went, we went ahead and we um, sculpted the wrinkles and added some form to the pair of pants. And I'm, I'm going to show you, show you right here. So um, in this story, we're going to ZBrush now, and this these are the um, these are the pants. That I, that I wouldn't sprint, that I wouldn't sculpt it in. Um, if you saw if you saw the ending of this video, the wrinkles I have are like more like a cookie dough effect, which is something I didn't want. So I went back this morning and changed some of the wrinkles to make it feel more natural, like the pants being you know, like, you know, like, 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 like a sleeve being pulled up in your shirt. You know, so it bunches up. You kind of want that little wrinkle, the stress, the, the stress marks and the wrinkles go to go to the um, clothing. So what we're doing is that. So let's um let's get underway. So I'm gonna go ahead and get the shirt. And this shirt here was from, was from model, des model designer. And for this one, I went ahead and I um had this poly groups. You probably noticed you probably you probably know you probably noticing that they collar is missing. And I had a, I had a t had an issue with the collar, so I was trying to fix that. So I went ahead and I. I'm going to go ahead and append a new subtool of the collar. And basically, the collar is its own separate geometry. And, and it's, also a, it's also a quad mesh. So I'm trying to make sure to see where it is right now. Okay, it's not here. Where's my shirt? Where is my collar? Hang on, let's see. Let's try that again. I don't know if it's I don't know I don't know if it's saved or what, but let's see let's see where it is. All right, I'm gonna do it this way. Import a new um a new mesh in here. See what happened. Hey, there we, there we go. So there's our shirt collar right here. And this one is this one is an aqua topology, which is fine. This is to avoid any issues that we run into later when trying to when trying to like um remesh a shirt. So like so like the last video we did, we're, we're gonna we're gonna rework the shirt here. Now, at this point right here, the lower part we don't need. So we're gonna what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do before I do anything else, I'm gonna I'm gonna hide. These parts that I don't need to be seen to be shown now. Okay. Because not only that too, but once the shirt is in the game, you're not gonna met, you, you may you won't see it much. So I'm trying to think here. I could probably just um you know what? I'll do that. I'll paint that up instead of like trying to cut it across and make a mess. I'm gonna go ahead and just slice it and just do a quick slice through. So I'm going to my geometry tab here, and I'm going to go ahead and hit zero measure. I want to maintain the polygon poly groups that I have here, so I'm going to go ahead and that. Okay. Let me turn off symmetry. That's not what I want. And of course, you know, using zero measure and it's a pretty Really great tool for creating creating new geometry, and there we are. This is the new new shirt to have here. And I'm gonna do it again one more time. I'm trying to make sure that I'm trying to make sure that I have enough um enough um enough um enough of a clean mesh to work with. Like right like right here, the um the right sleeve's messing up. So let me see if that work here. So try to maintain the maintain the, the the exact mesh count there. Yeah, see that pinching right there, the little pinch right there. I do not want that pinching, so I'm trying to fix, trying to trying to, trying to lay whatever pinching I can get rid of. Basically, any kind of three D sculpting, you don't want any pinching. Pinching is bad. Very bad, and you know, you, 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 you try to avoid it as much as you can. 
It's not. I guess. I guess we're not going to be able to avoid it. That's okay. We'll we'll work with what we got. Yeah. So kind of a kind of nasty pinch right there. Yeah. Wait a minute. Here we go. I, think I found. I think I found the culprit too. I'm trying to smooth that out just a little bit. There you go. Sometimes you do, sometimes from MD, um, you'll get some pinching, your, you get triangles that overlap each other, like wrinkles, and we're trying to avoid that, so let me go ahead and smooth out some of these wrinkles here, wrinkle marks on the uh, model. I mean, initially I did all this, I wanted to have a, a, a full shirt, a full shirt, but it didn't, it wasn't going to work like that, so I'm going to go ahead and Try to, try to try to paint up as many wrinkles as I can. I think that's it now. We should get a we should get a little cleaner edge on the um on the bottle there. There we go, perfect. Sometimes you work as you were measuring when you're ready, you want to get rid of some of your wrinkles. Turn this out to fifty. I set the um, curve strength to 50 so that it's at a middle ground for my modeling. A little lower, huh? I think I. Actually, here we go. Let me get rid of the curves. And you're probably noticing too there's no music playing here. I, um. Usually, usually music I will have like you know playing play my headphones while I'm working and a nice way to relax on a day like this. I'm trying, to, trying to see any issues, any kind of irregularities with my model here. Yeah, let's try that. Trying trying to um, fix any kind of potential issues that may arise. Right? Sure. Yeah, like right, like right here, right over there. Try to fix that little piece there, so that it doesn't weird. So I'm probably going to delete that little, that small triangle there. Depending on how, depending on how I feel, this, how I feel about the situation. Put a ten. All right, so I guess I'm gonna. So I guess I'm gonna have to live with it. It's fine. So anyway, this is the um the shirt mesh we're gonna work with. You probably notice. You probably noticed too that the um the character is looking a little buff in the in the arm area. So what I want to do is I want to maintain. I want to maintain this 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 sleeve down because it's gonna be controlled by cloth simulation in real time game. And I don't want I don't want the cloth I don't want any kind of cloth um, any kind of cloth details here. And one thing to do is one thing to do as well is I want to actually UV map parts of the shirt. So let's see here with this here. I want to actually add some, add, add a little bit of thickness to the shirt. Move this a bit so that it'll. So at least it'll cover any kind of areas that I have to deal with later. It, in, in, none of this matter because it's going to be covered up anyway. It's going to be um, layered carefully. So let's add some thickness to the collar. That's, a, that's an important part of this. That's a very important part of the um, modeling process. And we usually will I'll usually do this until it looks good to me. Correct thickness. Thick. And I could have also done all this too using the um using the using the um sleep modeler tools, but I kind of you know it's not really necessary sometimes to really keep to keep on 
using the same tools over and over, so this is, this is a lot faster for me. All right, let's start there. And same thing here. I want to use like you know at least, at least, at least a consistent thickness for um. Go ahead and also too ignore ignore groups. We'll keep the part keep the panel keep the, the part groups together. So I'm trying to make sure that we yes, that's my Darth Vader theme playing on my phone, which is pretty awesome. Let me hit panel loops and you can show some thickness. So when I go ahead like this, I go ahead and um, do this and hit the um do a quick test subdivision test, you'll see that the um the shirt feels more complete. And I'll be adding like seam lines and wrinkles in the right places when we um get to that when we get to that that um, part of the design. Okay. So let's begin but let's begin now by um I'm gonna start I'm gonna start with um adding adding some adding some seam lines. Shirt. Sure. So to do that, we're gonna we're gonna climb up one the vision level. Oh. Let me see that looks like if I even do anything. And also, also remember, also got to remember too that the um. Here, let me put a crease in it. Let me put a crease in it so that I don't, I don't um, accidentally move too much of the model out. That's a little better, and this here will be fixed so that it'll actually go a little over this, to give me a feeling of layered on fabric. So we're gonna divide once. We're gonna, we're gonna divide twice, so that we can get a nice clean seam here. Most likely too, once I once I finish this part, and here's the and here's the overcoat. I'm gonna probably add some details on this. You can feel like you know, add like, probably add a button, or probably add like a button or something, or you know, or make the shirt basically easy to take off. That um, I didn't think about when I was doing this design. I didn't think about buttons. You know, I figured the shirt. I figured the shirt would be. I could probably like add a few little buttons on the side there to really, to really sell the effect. Actually, I did say I'm going to remove the this is right here. Yeah. Kind of um makes this point. That's, that's 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 good enough for now for what we, what we needed to do. Okay, sometimes when I create my models, I like to go back and forth and make sure that I get the get what I want out of it. All right, that'll work. Okay, so basically, we're now we're now going to go ahead and start adding the little um, seam lines in the shirt. So the first one to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, depending on my seam line, like last time, I I, I kind of like the seams pillowing forward. So this back this back panel here is probably the easiest candidate for for, for allowing for allowing us to do that. Go ahead and. Mask off the back here, and invert that mask, and then we'll and then we're going to very slowly paint um, paint up an edge there. So let's go ahead and apply my masking. <clears throat> I 
And, and my trick, my trick usually is for creating like the little seam panel, like the illusion of seams, is I want to paint forward. Of, I want to paint forward of this, forward of the mass. So if we, we, we do this, it'll create more detail than you need, or or, or it'll alter the form too much. Let's go ahead and paint along. along the seam line here and we'll, we'll basically we basically keep on we'll keep going down to the edge of the shirt and as, as i've already mentioned too we're not worried about detail at this point i can always go back and enhance what i, what I need in the shirt i'm kind of you know i'm kind of establishing the area, the um, the seam line that I need, so that when I go back and detail the shirt and add add cleaner wrinkles, I'll be it'll, it'll be a lot easier. Like take you know, dial down the, the seam line or take away detail I don't need. And same thing, same thing on the other side. Again, painting full painting forward of of the um, of the um mask oh you also want to do the the sleeve too, so we're gonna do that as well. And that, and of course you, and of course I could do this in Mars Designer, in Mars, in Mars Designer, you know, realistically modeling it, just layering. But you know, this, this is a little more, this is a little bit more, a bit more relaxing and more rewarding for me to do it this way. Like, like, you, like you notice how T-shirts is like a. A little, it's a little line, a little seam line in your shirt. Um, in I think in you make in fabric making, they call that a seam allowance. And you, and you basically, you, ba you basically want to have it in, have a, I think it's a quarter inch. I'm not sure the exact size. I am not a seamstress, but you know what can I say? I'm sure my mother would be very proud of that. Me, um, make my own, make my own virtual clothing. So I'm gonna paint forward the mask. And how, and how many guys? How many guys? Um, you know, think of um, think of the trend of um, you know, using computer graphics and um, photogrammetry for creating things like clothing and environmental assets. I've been, I've been I've been thinking about learning um, learning how to do um, photogrammetry and graduating until like graduating until like um, really advanced um, processing you know of of objects like um rocks and trees. Which I will admit, I do not enjoy modeling. <laughs> I'm going in and I'm kind of, I'm kind of trying to go in and and I'm and I'm and I'm, going, and I'm thinking about adding stitches to the stitching to the clothes laid down a line. That'll come later, in my process. And in another video too. That's kind of kind of want to get all this blocked in. Okay, let's um, let's see. So now let me draw my let me add the grid. My scene there. I get an idea where my center line is, so that I can draw the um. So I can fix some stuff here because um, the way the shirt's modeled, it's not symmetrical. And basically, I'm I'm actually learning how I'm actually learning more. I'm learning I'm learning I'm learning more how to how to not have symmetry on my models. Here we go. I'm trying to um, do the grid here so that I can move the uh, this piece right here a little to the middle without messing without messing up everything else. Trying to mask the mask still on there, so let's go. Yep, here we go. Yeah. 
And now we'll do the same thing for the front of the sleeve. Um, I'm going to go ahead and select both shells. You don't mind the, you don't mind the inside of the shirt. That's a, um, the inside of the shirt is not important right now. You know, we'll, you know, we'll, there's most of anything you see inside the shirt, the, um, the pink poly, the little poly group there. That's a, that's a very unimportant part of the, of the model. We don't need that anymore. But it's just, it's just there for convenience. Same as the little thing I was talking about, little thing I was don't mention earlier. That, br that break in your model. Try to, if you can, you try, you try to avoid that or, you know, be clever by model, by that pinch in your mesh. You know, I could have I could have easily just went ahead and did a whole new topology manually with this, but it would, it would defeat the purpose of using model design in the first place. Because I can always go back in and fix issues with the mesh. You know, and originally I wasn't doing a live stream of this, but I think this is a little, this is a little more intimate than sit here and record and not worry about time. Although I do want to try to keep these um do the sessions under under an, uh, under an hour or more. Um, the last video was like an hour and a half, and that 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 was spent a lot of time you know fiddling with the mesh and trying to get an understanding of um what I want. And plus two is four. Plus like plus it was like two o'clock in the morning. I started recording that, so I wanted to really day yeah, like try to get the my top my timing down. I'm trying to um, give the illusion of layered cloth here. It's gonna bother me for a while, so I'll try to, let's just try to fix. Let's try to figure out a little bit. It won't matter. It won't matter anyway, because um, you know, once we get in, once we get into normal mapping, it's not gonna matter much. And another way too of making um panel cloth is you can actually take your your cloth mesh and shove it into. You can take this, you mess the part off, and push it into the mesh. That's, that is another trick I learned today. A little puck, like, a, like a small pucker cloth there. And the fun part for me would be getting this into a game. <laughs> That's always the fun part for me. All right, now, same thing here to sleeve. Except this time, I'm going to... Lower the subdivision level and see. I'm gonna lower the sub D level and see where the um, the seam is. So the seam is the seam line is. Ooh, I want to. I'm gonna create a. I'm gonna create a poly group here. But of course, in ZBrush, you can't do that, unfortunately, with the subdivision level. I'm gonna go ahead and it's real. It's real quick. Use a select brush and just pick an edge, right? Pick an edge and hide it for a minute. This, you know, this is also too. This is also, this is also a clever. This is also a very clever way of um. This is also a very clever way of working too, which is nice. The same thing here. Same thing here as well, because what I want to do, what I'm going to be doing eventually, is making a, a pucker around this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide that. Do the same thing here, you know. And honestly, I could I could I could I could have used a um a poly group a um a symmetrical, a symmetrical model, but I wanted but I wanted to challenge myself today and try modeling a modeling a design without using symmetry. Because 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 in reality, um, clothing is not symmetrical. I mean, well, it's well, it's it's designed symmetric, symmetrically, but you know, you basically. You basically don't want um, too much more details in your model. So let's see what this was. Let me check. Let me check once more. Over there. Visual checks. We'll go ahead and hide that right there. And the edge. And I want to. And I want to actually. I I don't want to. I don't want to destroy my poly groups. Actually. You should, yeah, let me should go back and do the way I had before. But I'm gonna hide. I wanna hide um there for a minute. Put it there right there. 
um, join this. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we got better. Basically, I was trying to, I was trying to, um, actually trying to, um, make sure that I didn't lose my, my place when I do all this because it's important to make sure that your poly groups are in the right place. And there we go. All right, now it's ready. So now, so now we're gonna go back now and we're gonna go back and so you wanna, so now so now you want to add the little the little pillowing of um detail there. So I'm gonna go up my subdivision levels and see where they are. And basically, like I mentioned, this is basically this is going forward. So I'm with this going forward too. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. So now we're going to go ahead and. I'm going, to, I'm going to hide. I'm going to take this right there, hide that, and invert it and make a mask out of it. Turn it to a mask there. I mean, it's going to look weird because it's pretty low resolution, which is fine. You know, we want, you know, low, re low res enough so that we can work with it easily. Um, basically, you know, if you remember, if you remember last night, my, my, my pizza analogy, you know, don't be so quick. Put toppings on the pizza yet until the dough, until the dough is finished. So kind of going in, kind of going in now and adding the pocket, adding the, the pillow of um little seam there. And of course, you know, I can all, in the course I'm also going to go and uh, oops higher subdivision levels. Actually, let me go back a little bit. And I'm gonna turn on um brush backface masking so that we don't so that I don't so that when I um because knowing that too in the game you 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 will see this part you will see the inner part of the sleeve and I don't and I don't I don't want to, I don't want to project it from the outside. There you go. All right, that's it. More intensity, a little more, a little, a little, a little more muscle brush. It's kind of good that we're doing it this way because um you know it's a lot easier for me and it's fun to to really add detail to your models and you know and visual interest to you in some visual, some sort of visual interest to your work. Yeah, I could have easily I could have easily used use um, MD for all this and have the sleeve have the sleeve um you know you know and have the uh this, you know the sleeve pattern sewn to itself. You know, but that you know that wouldn't that wouldn't have been that wouldn't that would have been too much fun to do, and 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 it adds it adds unnecessary complexity to your work. I'm gonna blend it out. This is and this is not only one way to do things. Um, the great thing about ZBrush is that. There, there are many, there are many, there are many ways to do the same thing in this program. You know, creating um, seam lines for your, for your, for your clothing. This is one of them. And that little, that little pocket right there, in the shirt. And the reason why you paint a, also remember, also reason, reason why we made a poly group too is so that in the poly group we. We have the ability. We have the ability to um, mask out parts we want, or mask parts we don't want, and prevent them from being drawn on. So this is the. Um, you zoom back a little bit. Yeah. And we now we need to do the on um, the cuff of the shirt. So do that. We're gonna unhide this. And I want, and I actually want the cuff to be puffed backward. So basically, I'm going to hide this and this. Actually, let's not do that. I'm going to hide this. Go back and hide this. Mask it, and then do this. And then, and then, and then, then turn the mask turning off. So, so now we're going to go ahead now, and we're going to do the same thing. You know, basically the same thing as, as this part here. And it wasn't until recently that I started doing my shirts like this. You know, basically going in with a, with a brush and, you know, 
creating the uh, seam right there. And also, to, and also too, also too for the um for this for the sleeve here. I'm gonna be I'm going for the sleeve. I'm gonna be add I'm gonna be adding um some details on this as well. Oh yeah, the one thing I don't want right now too is let me go back a little bit. There we go. So let's pick the mask there again. And basically, I'm trying to avoid this line being drawn on. So we're gonna go ahead and see something. I'm gonna take this mask here. Basically, we don't want the. You gotta remember this is a line here. Let's draw on this. So I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm pretty careful when it comes to drawing on my, on my models. It's um, it's going slow and. Hit that, hit that edge there. Do it, do it very slowly. That's all. Going slow, you know. If you are in a, in a company or production, yes, you're on the timeline. It's important very fast. But for, for something like this, you know, for personal practice or even portfolio, you, you know, right now, right now for this video of YouTube, I'm, I'm trying to do this for under, this quickly, under an hour. But I, but you at home, you but you at home, you have a limited, you have. Time is um, limitless at home for you. You know, if, you know. If I wasn't recording this, I could spend an entire day modeling my shirt, modeling the shirt. And also, just also it's important as well to you know take take, take free, if you're doing a lot of modeling and a long project, take 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 frequent breaks so that you, so you come back to it, your your mind's refreshed and you you, you, don't, you don't feel as tired from modeling. And of course, I could have used the um the, the inflate the inflate deformer here, but I think using a brush is a little more a little more fun and more fun and personal for me. And I'm also going to be adding like details on the sleeve too, like um little like little detailed embellishments on the sleeve in a, in, a, in a future video. Or not or well yeah I'll be showing in a future video how I, how I go about creating like little. Little like um details like um threads on the shirt. And I picked the and I picked the belt and I picked bell sleeves because it looks so much because I think bell sleeves look so much cooler on a wizard, you know, enemy character. And I'll and I'll and I'll and at some point I'll probably and at some point today I'll probably take a break from modeling and play some Elder Scrolls. Just a you know just a just for inspiration. Yeah. You know, if you if you played if you played the um if you ever played the original version of um Elder Scrolls Skyrim, they have a version of Xbox One that's really beautiful. It's um they call it remastered and unfortunately I have it already on Xbox 360, but the graphics are breathtaking. And if you have the PC version even more, I um I kinda I kinda wish the um the ultra real mod made it in. On the PS4 version, that would be kind of neat to have that in there. I think that's enough on that sleeve there. You, you, know, pull, you pull away, you model a little bit. You, you can see the little cuffing of the shirt there. All right, same thing on the other side. You know, this is basically this is basically the process I go through daily when I'm working on modeling. Same thing there. Make sure the the seam break is on the side there. Hide that. Mask it off. Oops. Right there. Mask it off. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get in there and mask my surface carefully. Kind of a pain, none of that too. But I'm also working with a lower polygon count than I originally planned. I tend to work in this way so that it's easier to manipulate your surfaces. You know, the one thing you don't want is a heavy model that you can't edit. That you can't edit quickly. All right, so I'll work. With, I'll work with this. It's fine to work with. Oh, anything else? 
make sure that I also do the same thing for this and this. Clip a mask and draw a mask in this one. Because I want that seam line to go all the way down the arm. Okay, better. And at some point, I'll, at some point, I'll I'll raise the polygon count higher. Actually, it's gonna bother me a lot. Here we go. You know, hide that. And I'll paint. Let me just paint a mat. Let me paint some masking right here. A little better to work with. So kind of um, here we go. Basically, what I want to make sure is that I don't get any sculpt, any any sculpture, any sculptural details outside the line there. See how see how easy it is? It's quick, quick, easy, painless. And I hope and I hope the next version of ZBrush, if, if if version five ever comes out, you know it's like a phantom right now because you know ZBrush is a ZBrush is a powerful program. You know there's, I mean their innovations for for the last um I've had ZBrush since 2006, and the I've had the program its programs is 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 grown like tremendously. You know I cannot see myself not have this program available in my tool set. You know, there's also other programs like um, 3D Coat, which is good as well. There's uh, Mudbox, you know, but ZBrush is my tool of choice, and basically it's not going anywhere. In fact, in fact um, if any if any kids see the, come across this video, you know, I, I would I would love to like you know get get you know get get kids into 3D modeling and sculpting. You know, it's like it's like using Play-Doh only on a computer. And 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 on and yes, on occasion I do on on occasion I do on occasion I do like you know put a play doh on occasion. It's kind of fun. Still to this day, who, I mean you know who who has who hasn't used, who hasn't used play doh in their in their lifetime? Boy, play doh play doh is the next best thing next to ZBrush. <laughs> and that's and like and, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not joking either. That is actually really. Really fun, like use Play Doh and you know get away from the get away from the computer once in a while. Let's do the um the cuff. No, that's another important element. So kind of going and doing the same thing with earlier as with the other other arm. I mean, sure, I could use symmetry, but you know, I'm I'm sadistic sometimes, and it's also part of my work, my learning process too. Is um, not everything can be solved with symmetry. You know, and basically, it, it's kind of also my way too of trying to become a stronger modeler. And, in, in in these um these series of videos um art you know, graphics, it actually came about it actually it actually came from the idea that um you know I'm a perfectionist and I spend too much time in one area, and I figure I can add my, I can figure I'm recording myself doing this so it'll add some it'll add some extra pressure for me to finish my work quicker. You know, I, I think of this like you know like a time test, except you except you're creating stuff and having having fun doing it. Basically, you know, it's good to be perfectionist, but sometimes um, perfectionism can interfere with the normal processes, you know. You get fixated on one thing, and you spend the whole day fixing that one thing, and then, as you know, of course, the whole day, the, the whole day has gone by, and you've, and you've done nothing. 
and I'm trying to avoid that in, in my projects. Especially, especially comes with 3D printing. Um, I'm going to get my hands on a model price in a few weeks, and then and then have fun, you know, taking these models in ZBrush and you know, printing them up and processing them into real figurines. And I'm and I'm kind of considering um doing a video, doing videos in my series of 3D printing too. You know, it'll be it'll be kind of interesting to see. You know what I, what I can do with it. Kind of smoothing up the bumps a little bit here. <sighs> Try to get the uh, that little little pillow in the fabric there. Pop everything. I think that's good, right? I think it's good for now. So if you pull it back forward a little bit, you'll see the little pillows of um fabric on there. And of course, I could have went ahead and do this shirt symmetrically, but it's not fun for me. And I want to see how far I can do this without using symmetry. The um the final body mesh will be symmetrical too, which is nice. Well, actually, let me go ahead and duplicate this. Yeah, let's, let's, I'll do that later. I'm not gonna mess with it now. Mess up my work. So this is the um the shirt so far. And as mentioned already, I want to. I'm gonna. I'm, gonna, I'm probably gonna add like a little seam line here in the middle. Yeah, that just came to mind just now. I'm thinking right ahead for this. I'm gonna go ahead and just hide that part. Throw it in. Usually on a shirt, like right here. It could usually butt the other, the panel goes from the left to right, so I kind of want to do that for this one. You know, giving you know, to, you know, to give the illusion of a shirt it's going to be buttoned. And I'll admit, though, I do love I do love the extra pressure I'm going to be take undertaking when I do my my uh, modeling of um char of characters and monsters and all that stuff. And I'm only going to go so far down on the sh on the shirt seam because, as I mentioned, it's going to be covered by the overcoat, and I'm most likely going to use a three three D mesh for like but the button and the and the fancy button coveralls. I'll cover this. Kind of pill in effect a little bit. That's be that's be that's be good for now. Yeah, win, yeah Windows Ten is notifications. <laughs> I'll turn it off next time I do this. Kind of a pain in the butt to see that to see that and it's popping up. Gonna hide the um, overcoat so I can then see it looks. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so now this this done with the you know, the seams in place. I now want I now want to actually start you know breaking down these forms a little bit. Like right like right now like like in the, like like the um when I created this shirt originally. This is this is the body that I used the, um, for the shirt modeling, and I'm trying to hide that. I'm trying to hide the fat. The um, I'm trying to get rid of the muscular shirt a little bit. Now, this, this character I'm creating, he's not muscular in any way. You know, he's like, he's an average sized man. So, you actually is. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go use a brush and use a clay toothbrush, and you know, get rid of any, get rid of any kind of um, get rid of, get rid of the um. Here's a musculature body. Now usually, I, usually, usually I model usually my model my characters in MD, 
I am. They could model them. I don't know why, but I use I use the same base mesh every time I model a character. I like mu like muscles and that stuff, you know. Kind of kind of smoothing out that shirt a little bit and erasing kind of musculature that would appear in the shirt. Back here as well. Here the um here are the details of the um the tra trapezius and the terrace major and minor. It's important to, it's important to erase those features, otherwise it'll, it'll look really weird in game. You know, like you know, like he's on like he's Bruce Banner or something. And this character in particular I'm creating, he is no Bruce Banner. Wrinkles, I'll leave the wrinkles there for I'm gonna, I'm gonna use wrinkles because they don't we don't need them. We don't need the wrinkles anyway. So let's get rid of this ready wrinkles. Let these wrinkles real quick and see. Yeah, we don't need the wrinkles. We don't need the wrinkles. You know, it, the wrinkles just compl the wrinkles just you know visually complicate things, and we don't want them there. And it's all been covered up anyway, so I'm just doing it now so that you know, we're better. Now, another thing too is um, if you look at you look at a shirt, and you turn a transform to go to the ghost. You can see, you can see that it looks like he's really muscular, and this character, when I initially designed him, I didn't want him muscular, so I'm I'm going in and just sort of symmetry for this one. I'm going in and just carefully painting out any kind of musculature in the character. So let's go let's go ahead now and fix the sleeve so that so that any kind of mu so that he doesn't appear muscular and it's gonna clip. Okay, in this case, because um, kind of don't I kind of don't want him muscular by any mean by any by any stretch by any stretch, you know. Or I mean, it all I mean, it all depends on it all depends if you like if the character's um if he feels muscular to me. I'm gonna see the let's see, let me look at it real quick and see. Well, it actually, looks fine. I'm not gonna mess with it any further. It looks looks okay actually. I mean, I, I thought I thought I thought it'd be an issue. They go muscular. I guess not. All right. So now that that's how the fun part begins. I'm gonna start adding um little adding wrinkles in the sleeves. Yeah, you, know, you know those you know the stress wrinkles. Also keeping in mind that anything anything we hear down, I do not want detailed. Because I'm just gonna because um immunity immunity is gonna be driven by cloth simulation. So I don't want I don't want any kind of muscular any kind of muscular detail to show any kind of muscularity to show through. Or wrinkles fat matter, and here are the bell sleeves. I'm probably gonna take. I'm probably gonna take up the. Probably from. I think from here. Yeah, I'm gonna take this in here. Just move it in. Just a little bit, so that. So that so that looks so so feels smaller in the character. There you go. Kind of I'm going in and moving this around. That's a power. That's the basic power of ZBrush. You can you can do this. You can take your meshes and move them around a little bit. You know, and basically, um, model designer is like a a base mesh kind of program. So we basically, we we I could we could basically edit this at will, if you want. Kind of going in and moving. Yeah, see, kind of fit, avoid that as much as possible. Basically, the sleeves are symmetrical, but the physics of the software must sort have of basically created the look of the sleeve. So let's go in now, and we'll go in the standard brush and start editing, editing out the wrinkles a little bit. So right here, I'm gonna go in here, start brushing wrinkles down. Okay, that's too much. Brush is too, that's too big. Okay, here we go. And I kind of want to go in. And... I kind of, I kind of want to go in and get rid of the. Um, the muscle marks on the shirt. So we're gonna go in and just, you know, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking, I'm looking at my own shirt for reference right now. You should see, I can do this right now and get an idea of of the stress marks on the, on the shirt. So I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and also draw a few wrinkles here and there on top on top of the jacket sleeve. 
Also, these wrinkles will help um, hide any kind of musculature that will occur. And, and also, to, oh, you also want to turn off um, your symmetry when you do this. You want to have um, the wrinkles look as natural as possible. I want I want I want I want too many because um it's supposed to be like put like a like a one of those um like you ever seen like a mage or or a warlock or something like that in in a game like Skyrim you don't know what I'm talking about uh, I'm sure and I'm sure a lot of you right now are been playing um Destiny and Overwatch those are two amazing games I've been hoping to get I've been hoping to um. Get get into Overwatch. We have a little time, little time for um, gaming. I go in there with the strut with the wrinkles a little bit and give the appearance of a bend to the sleeve. And also, also considering that the um, this model is like this cop shirt is like three hundred thousand polygons or more. Trying to um, impression of uh, wrinkling the shirt there. Oh, and also too, ZBrush um, auto save is your best friend. I mean, I can't count the number of times I've gone to bed and I woke up and nothing saved in the past. You know, basically, um, I think quick save, quick save was probably the smartest thing they've ever had in software. I, I love, I love quick save. It is quick save has saved me a lot of headache in the past. All right, there we go. Still trying to get rid of it. I'm trying to um, sculpt out any kind of any kind of musculature in the shirt. I don't want I don't want any muscle. I don't want any muscle showing. Let me see something here. Let me see this for a minute. Okay, good. Yeah, so the sleeves still the sleeves still have symmetry to them. So I'm gonna I'll, I'll probably go I'm gonna, I'll probably gonna fix this a little bit so that the this part will hang down a little more. Cause um for some odd reason gravity doesn't take gravity didn't take hold of the shirt like it's supposed to, or or, di or did it, it must have has a wind wind blowing or something on it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just take this piece here, drag up the sleeve a little bit. And that's the beauty of symmetry too. I'll be, I'll be able to do all this. Just to fix the sleeve so that's a little more rounded. I'm gonna go in a little bit and fix this up so that doesn't look weird. Here we go. And also 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 too, this is also more of a visual cue from a visual cue for me. Not to, not to edit this anyway. You know, important and most importantly to you guys, artists. Um, you know, definitely t definitely take your time when you work on your projects. You know, whether it's per whether it's a personal project or something for a client. You know, here for a client, time is um time's important, but you want to make sure you take your time when you're working. The worst thing, the worst thing you can do as an artist is rush to the very end. You know, it's like a, it's like a cuisine. I do not want to rush. I, I don't, I don't want to rush, rush the um, eating, app, eating the um, appetizers into the main course. You know, I kind of want, I kind of want to earn, I kind of want to earn my dessert. That could, that's the way, that's one way of putting it. You know, you know, you know basically, earn your dessert. I'm gonna put some, some some stress wrinkles right here on the sleeve, and that's where I want the, the wrinkling to be most. And, and remembering not to detail this, go back a little bit clay tubes. Parts this part symmetrical, so I want to make sure that when I redraw this in the, in the for the um, in my in my, in my later sessions with topology, it'll actually look decent. I'm gonna have to bugger something with this. 
there we go. Kind of, yeah, it's not symmetrical. It's not symmetrical, so at this point, you see something. Let me see if I can do a smart res a smart resim on this part. Yeah, let's let's see if I can do a smart resim on this. It it might not allow me to. So let me see what I can get away with. Yeah, I don't, I kind of don't want to do that to my model. So. Let's see do here. Let's go to this go to the mat go to the mass brush and mass pen. We're gonna go ahead and do a mask uh mass curve. We'll mask that part off. Unfortunately I don't think it works. I don't think it works, Matt. I don't think it let's see if it works both ways. It should. Here we go. And then turn symmetry off and use use the um, mask mask lasso tool. And just cover this whole part right there. And, and then do a smart resim. There you go. Might have messed up my geometry a little bit, and it did. Basically, basically, I'm trying to fix this issues with symmetry on this so that I can get I can get this part can. This. Right, I'm gonna have to wrap the rest of this off and just keep the salute symmetrical. There we go. It's kind of I wanted to do originally. Make sure that the at least the lower half of the sleeve is symmetrical. Alright. Actually, yeah, that, I shouldn't have did that. All right, I'll leave. I'll leave it alone. I'll leave it for now. I can always do cut to it later. So anyway, let's go back and let's finish up here. You know, the wrinkling. Trying to allow them to get the wrinkles back where they were. And if I go stop, if I go quiet sometimes when I'm working and doing these these doing these, doing these um, broadcasts, I'm usually think I'm usually thinking of I'm usually thinking of um of my design of my design process and how and how I want to approach my, uh, my detailing. So, alright, so with this, I don't this, I'm gonna get rid of any kind of musculature and shirt. Like, like, right, like right here, this is the, um, the deltoid. I don't want that, I don't want that seen in the model, so I'm gonna take very, you know, very carefully sculpt out any kind of muscle detail. I mean, literally any, like, right, like right here, the back of the arm. This is the, um, I mean, the muscle, but it's called the brachialis, back of the arm. It's right here. I want to make sure that isn't seen in the in the modeling process. So kind of going in and just uh And the wrinkles there, and it's wrinkles on the back of the, and the wrinkles on the back of the arm there. Where...
Nothing at random. Nothing at random. Kind of, you know, I'm probably gonna come back and get rid of these wrinkles later. You know, just in case I feel you don't, you don't fit. Yeah. You know? All right. This is more like a, you know, like a very flowy, you know, it's a very flowy um robe kind of shirt. You know, like the kind of shirt you wear at a graduation or like, like a what for a priest. You know, they, you know, the wrinkles tend to, they tend to radiate down, they tend to radiate downward, you know, bunch up, and they want to create that look. The, the, bun, the very bunch, the very bunch, the very bunching up appearance of wrinkles on, on my garments. And the sweet pink material to another material. And of course, I could have easily did this in MD, but, you know, not all the time you want, not all the time you want wrinkles assimilated. So here we go, I'm kind of going in wrinkles a little bit. And I'm also I'm still doing wrinkling, being very aware to not add, add any detail to this. You know, try not to, because it's not, you know, this will, the, this will be the first time in many years that I've used um cloth simulation in my game project in my game projects. Specifically like in Unity or Unreal. You know, usually uh, cloth cloth simulation is usually a luxury. And today and in the in, in, in the first character, I get to I get to enjoy the luxury for a little bit. Some volumes wrinkles, and of course, I had a gown like this for my graduation, and now I can't find a damn thing. Some kind of wind, some kind of wind there, right? Wind there, right now. And, but of course, not a choice in the game. I could, I could, I could probably simulate the entire, simulate this whole arm if I wanted to. But I'm not going to do that because, um, you know, like I said. Um, cloth simulation in games is a luxury, and I want to. I don't, and of course, you know, any kind of any kind of luxury you have, you don't want to abuse it. So I'm kind of going in there and wrinkles. And definitely the elbow. Definitely the elbow. You want a lot. You want a lot of wrinkles at the elbow, where it's going to bend. So I'm going to climb on my climb on my subdivision levels a little bit. And I can you I can also use the um the Damien standard brush and, and really like add the wrinkles I want in there. Uh, intensity a little bit. Draw size from start. Now okay, it's these subs, so I'm literally this brush on um, this pretty powerful brush. I can add gouges and enhance wrinkles this way too. You basically want to make sure that um Use it a little strength, so that's not so, not so, over, not so overwhelmingly powerful. I don't want to go in there and Kind of going in there a little bit and adding some adding some wrinkles like on the shoulder area too. And wrinkles up there as well. Three wrinkles on the wrinkles up here. The wrinkles here as well will break up the roundness in the shoulder a little bit. Well, you know, it's not how you smooth up there. You know, it's um. It'll radiate downward, 
and try to try not to put kind of get the, the extra wrinkles in there so that it'll kind of kind of it just kind of gravitate toward a certain point in the model. Kind of going in here and just looking at everything. And I'm, I'm, I will say this: that wrinkles are not easy to do. You know, it's, I'm, I'm not a master of this either, but you know, it takes it takes some practice to to make wrinkles look believable and bunch bunch up and you know, and, you know, and look and look natural, at least at least to the eye. And also, and also, also too. We also, we also have wrinkles in your in inclusion map. It looks really good too when you do it that way. Kind of going there. This. Looking back here, looking back here actually, looks pretty good. So uh, one thing we do next, so one thing we do want to do now actually is I want to add a little, at least add a button in like front of this, at least add some buttons or something to give the to give the illusion that there's um something extra there than than a thing of air. Um, oh, one other, one other thing too is this collar. I, I'm gonna I want to actually pull it. I actually want to pull this pull this collar a little bit over the shirt so that it gives the illusion of the um the collar being layered on the shirt. Actually. I'll 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 do symmetry in this case and just pull it, pull the shirt and look, pull this in a little bit. You know, you know, based on you know, based on a shirt collar. If you're looking at a shirt collar, you notice that. On the, on the collar, it's like there's a small pucker of fabric on top of it. And normal, normally under this is a series. Normally under this collar is a series of um stitches under this collar. For this one, I'm gonna have this collar right here. I'm gonna I'm probably gonna add like um some details on this. I'm not sure what though, but kind of cool to be able to add it on there and give the illusion of fitness of the collar on top of everything. And also, 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 and also, in baked in game, in, in your normal, in your normal mapping, it'll look way cooler than, than a flat piece of geometry. You know, I could have did this on the sleeves, but this would be an exception. I'm trying to go in, kind of, kind of, um, play around parts of the one in this collar. Okay, and this is where this is where it's the part where I tend to go in and clean up everything. So now it's at um maybe four thousand. I'm gonna look at the shirt real quick and edit out like edit parts I don't like, like right here. I have a, I have a good flow here, not here. So I'm gonna go in this paint out the wrinkles there, re-add them. You know, 
you know, kind of like a Z pattern kind of thing. I've seen it done before, and you know, it runs a lot of cloth, cloth um, wrinkles. You know, yeah. I'm ask you guys to so interview people watch when you when you do the artwork. You know, smoke, you know, it's, it sounds strange, but you know, I, I think people watching it helps you um, understand physical form and a lot. I like to see differences in form. Um, I usually, usually, especially, especially in work. Um, you know, looking like retail or um, you know, work with, work with the general public. You'll see, you'll see people. Every, you'll see people every day. You know, and and it actually helps you too a little bit when you when you, work with, you see people. You see your differences in body shape and form and how they you know how their how their clothes fit. You know, on the on the, on their figures. You know, if this if this character he's um. He's not very muscular. He's not very muscular. So he's not very. He's not very muscle bound. He's, you know, average, very pretty average build. Um, despite what the mesh I had says otherwise, he was. Um, he was, you know, very differently built and you know, not very, not very muscular. So we're gonna try to. I want to use that to my advantage. And having the shirt bell, bell, bell suit like a bell suit like this, it actually makes the um, it gives the character an appearance of appearing strong. I'm trying to think now too if I could take if I can get away with um making the sleeves thinner all the it'll clip right through actually, let's just get that a shot actually see what it looks how it looks like this is this is the beauty of um of work of me working real time with you guys and not not cutting anything out so I'm gonna see real quick how it looks I'm, I'm gonna hide the shirt by itself so I can see See, it looks like and I think yeah yeah I think this will work out as well this will, this will be fine you know I'll, I'll basically have to adjust the base mesh of the character to compensate for that actually I can look at the base mesh right now basically his arms are a little bit bigger than they are so I wouldn't so I can go in and just you know change the form if I want you know I didn't like the fact that arms are too big and I think this, this, is a little, this is a bit more this is a bit more form fitting of the character so so I think at this point now I'm gonna stop right here you know and maybe and maybe in, you know, it's, a, it's a little break and probably add like little, add, 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 add a little add a little buttons or add a little buttons right here in the shirt and you know you know add, 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 a, add a button add a button in the middle of the shirt add a button in the middle of the shirt and um and, def and definitely, you know, make the character feel, you know, a little more grounded, especially in design. Right, right, like right here, I found the symmetry line, so the point isn't moving anymore. So this is kind of good too. Fix the symmetry, fix, fix the image of symmetry problems. You know, but yeah, I think he, I think for the shirt, the the smaller sleeves, are a lot better for me. So. So anyway, guys, um, I hope you enjoyed um, this little process of um, modeling the shirt. You know, added wrinkles and prepare the shirt for, for topology for simulation. Um, if you have any questions? Feel free to you know leave a little question in the comments or to say hello. And, and of course, um, you know, leave a like and please subscribe as I'm going to have way more cool videos. So from me to you, I thank you for watching my video and have yourselves a pleasant day.